and welcome back to the crochet crowd I'm your host Mikey today we're going to learn how to do the crochet broomstick lace and this is actually a really uh, fun idea the reason why I'm showing you behind the scenes which is abnormal is that I'm showing you how I'm supporting this particular broomstick this is actually a really big uh, knitting needle and I'm showing you how I'm doing it because when it goes in front of the camera you're going to be seeing it coming off but you're not going to be seeing how I'm supporting it so normally this would be on my lap when you're doing it so now let's get started on doing the broomstick Crochet. So here we have it. This is the crochet broomstick lace and you can see it kind of reminds you of a broom sweeping down and this gapping in between is created by using a very large knitting needle or broomstick. If you are going to use a broomstick I'd recommend that the broomstick actually be sanded before you use it. I've tried doing this before in the past and it was never successful because the yarn was catching on the burrs of the actual broomstick. So this is actually a very smooth surface. This is actually a very simple idea and pattern. I guess the main challenge is being able to support this a particular knitting needle at the same time of doing so this, this particular sample before I leave you is Red Hearts Boutique Treasure and you can see it did a really an amazing job of color transitioning so let's as begin. we went along. I actually did switch the yarn off with just a chunky weight um, for ply worsted yarn and we just want to create a slip knot. The reason why I did it is that I've already done it in the magical on camera but you can't really see the stitches. So we want to keep everything in groups of five. So this does this counts. This doesn't count as one. So let's set. So if you're doing an afghan, you can just count it in groups of five. So let's do this: one, two, three, four, and five. So there's one group of five. One, two, three, four, and five. There's two groups of five. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. And five. So you can actually measure this up against an afghan or a scarf. So this, if this was a scarf, this would be the actual width of your scarf. There's going to be four groups of the broomstick lace going on. So let's begin our next so step. So the next step I want you to do, and I just I haven't done anything off camera, and all I'm going to do is just going to stretch this loop and I'm going to place it onto your broomstick or your knitting needle. I'll just call it broomstick from this point on. And so I'm just going to look down to the very next one. So if I was crocheting along this chain, I would just look for the next one like you normally would grab the yarn and place it over top of the knitting needle. So just grab the next one. So, okay, so you're just working your way down the chain. Because you had a chaining of 20 when we started, okay, so no matter what it is, um, you will end up with the same amount of loops if you've caught all of the chains properly. So in my case it's going to be 20. So if you did a full size afghan and you said uh, that there's 100 stitches, if you did uh, this there should be a hundred major loops on this by the time you get across the chain this is actually kind of a fun process I, I do like stretching it across I don't know why I'm just sick I suppose but uh, I don't mind the process of just looping it on it makes for an easy uh, row because you are doing the broomstick uh, this particular row uh, you know is like an inch or so high so it makes your stuff grow pretty quickly you probably do a really quick afghan using this method as well so just continue to go along and I'm just going to count, make sure we have 20 offline and we'll be back and I'll show you what to do. So next. now that I've gone all the way across I have verified that there is 20 loops on here and you want to make sure that you don't want to wrap these around the broomstick as if it's really tight. You need to slip in your hook in behind and underneath so just get used to your tension being a bit, it does take a bit getting used to I have to say. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to put this yarn in behind so just grab it with your hand in behind Okay, this is the only time on this particular road that you will grab this yarn from the behind of the broomstick. I want you now to put your hook in and grab only five of these loops. Okay, so leave it on your broomstick. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I want to yarn over and pull it through the five. I want to lock it into place by just pulling it through that extra loop. And then I want you to chain one. Like that. So now we're ready to slide that off, and so you will see it just like so. So this is the only time that you will put just, uh, five single crochets from the point that you lock it. I'll show you what I mean by that next. So let's put in five single crochets, so one, so we're going right into the center, two, three, four, and five. And so now we're ready for the next step. So there is everything in to place. And so now I'm going to come in and I want to grab another five. Just like so. So now I'm going to come up 
okay and because of the way that I'm grabbing it it's gonna shift anyway the, the this positioning that we're doing right now will automatically go to the top regardless of where you put it so if I was to grab it down here pull it through it doesn't matter it will shift up to the top so let's uh, pull through all five again let's lock it into place so we're gonna pull through that loop and then pull through the last two loops available and we can slide okay so we're just rotating it forward okay so you want to maintain a consistency so now this time you're only going to single crochet four times one two three and four and the reason for that is that when you grabbed it for the very first time when you locked it that counts as one of them so let's uh, begin our next step okay here. moving right along we're just going to come up underneath just going to grab another five so one two three four five and it should end up with five left we're just going to yarn over Again, we're just going to lock that into end of place, and then we're going to pull through the final two. Oops. Pull through the final two as I promised. Okay, so now we're ready to slide that one off. We want to rotate it forward. And then we want to single crochet four times into that big gap. One, two three and four so we're ready for the final we're just going to slip up underneath get the remainder of five yarn over pull through lock it into position first by pulling it through the first one and then pull through both and now let's slide the whole bad boy off and we want to rotate we want to make sure that we're grabbing all of the strings uh, properly when we go to rotate that around and then we want to single crochet ourselves four times and that'll finish this off two three and four so there you have it there is the first step I know it looks kind of quonky or quirky right now but as we get the next row in you're gonna see that this is gonna settle down and everything will start making a lot more sense to begin the next row, I want you to pull this loop bigger like you did before. Now before when we did this, we were working along the chain and now we're going to be working along the top edge that you created. Okay, and what I like to do is just I like to count to five. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So this just helps me to make sure that there's always going to be five. I'm going to come into the next area here. And you should have the right amount of stitches going across anyway. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. And so do that all the way across, and you should end up with 20 back on here just like we did on the original uh, row that we did. So before. now that we have all 20 back on, we want to take the string and come around from the back. Remember, this is the only time in this project that you will come from the back. If you come from the front, it makes a very, very sloppy edge, and you'll be able to notice it after you get beyond a certain point. Grab the first five, just like we did before. We'll yarn over, lock it into place, and chain one. Just like that. We want to slide. So see how I slide, uh, slid this thing, and then I rotated it toward me. And then all I'm going to do in the big gap, like before, is that now I'm going to single crochet five times. So this is the only time you will do five times on this. So this is three, four, and five. Okay, going back down, we want to grab the next five, like so. Pulling it through, okay. You got two on there like before. Lock it and pull through two and slide. Okay, and I want to just single crochet four times. So one, two, three, and four. Back again, the next five. Okay, pulling it through all five, lock it, pull through two, and slide. Okay, and one, 
two, three, and four. And then finally, the last five. And so this is all it is. It's a very sim simple step. There's only two lines. Uh, let's lock it, pull through two, slide, rotate, and a single crochet four times. So it's a very uh, I, it's a very neat idea. It's very lacy. It's very fun. A nice afghan can be done, I think, relatively quickly. You know, the amount that you have on your broomstick going across may make the difference. So this is what it will look like, and you can see in the right yarn, this would be totally amazing. So what's going to happen is that you may notice that some of these broomsticks may be out of like looking pretty whack. Just give it a good stretch, and what it will do is it'll pull everything in line to each other and in all directions and you'll see that things will start to balance up just perfectly. Until next time, I'm Mikey from The Crochet Crowd.